Welcome. Today we will explain introduction to risk and return. And we will explain also history of financial market returns. Main learning objectives in this lecture. How we can calculate the expected rate of return and risk. Then describe the historical financial market returns. Then compute between geometric and arithmetic average rate of return. And explain efficient market hypothesis and why it's important to stock prices. Realize expected rates of return and risk. How we can calculate return of an investment? Realized return or cash return measure the gain or loss of an investment. We can calculate return of an investment by this equation. Cash return equal ending price plus dividend minus beginning price for an investment. Example. You invested one share of a company for $95. After one year, you sold this asset by $200. The company did not pay any dividend during that period. What will be the cash return on this investment? Cash return equal Ending price, $200, plus dividend, no dividends, zero, minus beginning price, $95. Cash return will equal $105. If we need to calculate rate of return as percentage, just we will divide cash return on beginning price. Cash Retain as the percentage will equal $110 percent. Calculating the expected return from an investment. Expected return is what you expect to earn from an investment in the future. It's estimated as average of the, both, the possible return where each possible return is weighted by the probability it occurs. We can calculate the expected rate of return from any investment by rate of return for each assets multiply probability of return for each assets. Example, if we have three assets, A, B, C, the probability for each assets 20%, 30%, the rate of return for each assets minus 10%, 12%, 20%. If we need to calculate the expected rate of return, probability for each assets multiply expected rate of return for each assets will equal the expected rate of return for each assets by summation for all. In this example, the expected return will equal 12.6%. Measuring the risk. Now, when we need to invest more than one asset, example, three assets, the expected rate of return not constant. Maybe for the first assets, minus 10%. Second assets, 20%. Third asset, maybe 40%. Also, the probability is not constant. Maybe the first assets 20%, second assets 10%, third assets 40%. For that, this variability in return can be quantified by computing the variance or standard deviation in any investment returns. What is the meaning of variance? The variance is the differences between the expected rate of return and actual return. And standard deviation is given by square root of the variance is more commonly used. 
let us to compare between two possible investment now if we need to invest in treasury bills or we need to invest common stock in a treasury bill is short term investment you will take 5% example as constant rate of this investment treasury bills is considered the risk free as there is no default risk on promised payment while if i need to invest in common stock maybe the required rate of return for this investment maybe to be 12 percent 30 percent is not constant for that an investment in common stock will be a risky investment why if i need to invest in a treasury bills the probability may be to be 100 percent while in if i need to invest in three assets in common stock maybe the first assets 20 percent second assets 30 percent the expected rate of return is not constant and also the probability for each assets is not constant maybe to be five percent ten percent this depends on the market on the investment for that the common stock more risky rather than the treasury bills calculating the variance and standard deviation we can measure the risk of any investment by computing the variance by this equation rate of return for each assets minus expected rate of return power 2 multiply probability of state for each assets In last example, when we explain if we need to invest between two assets, treasury bills or common stock, the expected rate of return for treasury bills, 5%. The expected rate of return for common stock, 15%. We observe the common stock, the expected rate of return, higher than the expected rate of return for treasury bills but treasury bills the standard deviation is zero while common stock the standard deviation 12.85 percent that's mean the common stock higher expected rate of return but more risk the investor choice of a specific specific investment will be determined their about what's risk for each investment. History of financial market. In this section, we will talk about the history of financial market. Investors have historically, historically earned higher rates of return on risk investment. Always, the investors expected to earn higher return. However, having a higher expected rate of return simply means that investors expect to realize higher return. But higher return is not guaranteed. That's based on the market, also the type of your investments. Example, if I need to invest in small stocks, the expected rate of return will not be same if I need to invest in large stocks also if i need to invest in government bonds the expected rate of return will not be same the expected rate of return for treasury bills also the risk will not be same for small stock and large stock now if i need to invest example if I need to invest in a small stock, maybe the expected rate of return 11.7%. While if I need to invest in treasury bills, the expected rate of return 3.7%. We observe, we observe 
the expected rate of return for small stock higher than the treasury bills. But the standard deviation for small stock, 34%. While treasury bills, the standard deviation, 9%. That means the small stock I will earn higher return, but there is high risk. While if I need to invest on treasury bills, there is limited return, but in same time there is low risk, very very low risk. Geometric and arithmetic average rates of return. In this section, we will compare between geometric arith and arithmetic average rate of return. Arithmetic average may not always give us true capture of returns. In same case, geometric or compound average may be to be more appropriate measure of return. Example, if we need to invest the stock, 20, we will take $25. After one year, the stock rises to $30 in the second year. It's fall to $15. What's the average return on this investment? If we need to calculate the expected rate of return for this investment by simple average will be minus 15. While if we need to calculate the expected rate of return or average rates of return by geometric will equal 20 minus 22.5%. Now, which one is the correct Geometric or arithmetic? For answer on this question, the geometric average rate of return answer this question. What was what was the growth rate of return on your investment? While the arithmetic average rate of return answer the question, what was the average of the yearly rates of return? What determines stock price? In this section, we will talk about the importance of information. In short, stock price tends to go up when there is good news. Now, if, if there's good news, the stock price will go up. While if there's bad news, the price of stock will go down. That means there is importance for the information. The efficient market hypothesis states that securities prices accurately reflect future expected cash flow and are based on information available to investors. An efficient market is a market which all have variable information. The efficient market hypothesis, we can distinguish among three types of efficient market, depending on the degree of the efficiency. The first type, the weak from efficient market hypothesis. Second type, the semi-strong from efficient market hypothesis. Third type, the strong form efficient market hypothesis. In the first type, the weak form efficient market hypothesis. In this type, the past security market information is fully reflected on the security prices. That means all prices and volume information is already reflected in the security prices. Why in the second type, semi-strong form efficient market, efficient market, 
That's based publicly available information only is fully reflected on the security prices. While in third type, the strong form efficient market hypothesis based that all information, public information, private information will evict on the prices of the securities. That means the strong from efficient market hypothesis is better one for reflect the importance of the information. Thank you for your attention. See you in next lecture.